Hi guys, uh, Chihu again from ProDrones. So we've gone out to get data, brought it back to the office, and I'm going to show you the post-processing workflow and what you can do with the software. You can't do post-processing without DJI Terra. With all LiDAR sensors, you usually have a proprietary software to do the initial data interpretation. So it's no different here. Uh, you have the Terra version. It's for you to do processing. And this is with the six months free license, which is the electricity version. So you get everything. So once you've copied your data over into the computer and uh, you're going to see in the folder, you're going to get various uh, files. So in the beginning, you're going to get all the calibration data, IMU data, raw LiDAR data, as well as the RTK base and the uh, RTK antennas on the drone. Now remember the M300 has two RTK antennas, one on the left, one on the right. So both of them are actually recorded here. And if you look at the bottom of the list, you see JPEG files. So those are the images of the four photogrammetry usage. You also remember that the M300, in fact, all the DJI systems, they don't support a third-party base directly. So either you have a network RTK or the DRTK2 base. A network RTK, you can, let's say, have uh, your own uh, base station and you will have to broadcast the RTCM correction data. So that data will then get fed into the remote and then through the remote, uh, it will then be stored in your project folder. Now, in the event you really have to do PPK, what you can do is uh, you can have uh, various uh, for formats of data. So if you see on the screen there, you have the VX, which is the raw for uh, new blocks. You have uh, RedX, which is the most common format. Uh, you have uh, RTCM, which is the correction data. And you will have to rename your files to the project folder name. So DJI, year, 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 month, month, day, day. You get a gift of it. And uh, once you have that, you put it in the same folder as your project and then you will then read this uh, correction data to do PPK. Okay, so to process data, uh, it's very simple. You copy the data into a folder. So you click on new mission, LiDAR point cloud processing. So let's just call it a test, right? Uh, you then load the data folders. So in this case, I just take, let's say this one. So once I have this, so if you have it set in high, it's going to process every single point. If you had it set in medium, it's going to process uh, only a quarter of the points. And low, is, if I'm not mistaken, would be 6.25% yeah, of points. So let's take high, and it's actually pretty fast. Now you can also set your output coordinate system settings. So in this case, default is WGS84. But of course, you can change to other things. For example, if you want to choose uh, UTM, or GDM2000, it's up to you. Parameters, only the pro version, you get the optimized point cloud accuracy, and this is actually a very useful tool. I'll show you the difference later. So we turn it on by default. Now you can also do filtering. So this, uh, what you can do is, let's say if you fly 200 meters above the target, you can have it filter anything that is further than 250 meters away. So what happens is, uh, let's say you got any noisy points at 300 meters distance, let's say, those get cut off. Reconstruction output, that gives you the formats of output. Uh, LAS is the most common one already. And then you just start processing. A few small nifty features with the DJI Terra and the L1. So one thing I forgot to mention is that now with the uh, you can actually put a quality report and you can actually see the processing time. Now, if you look at it, the whole thing here took three minutes, less than three minutes to finish processing. The data collection time was well above that. So you can see point cloud collection time, 4.8 minutes. Post data collection time, 7.9 minutes. So post data will be the IMU RTK data. The next thing is, it's not just a point cloud. So you can actually put it in 2D, new mission. If you take a 2D map, let's just call this park. So you can actually just load the entire folder from park and then they actually have the images when creating the thing. So you can really reprocess the whole thing in various other ways. Then you get the same thing. You get your output coordinate system setting. If you have any ground control points, you can set the ground control points. So you can only reconstruct just by a small area if you want to. So once everything is done, so this urban um, resolution we want high, 2D map. Just give it a few seconds. And reconstruction with 
Terra is actually a lot faster than you'd be used to if let's say you're using um, Agisoft. I'm not sure it's, if it's the optimization or algorithm efficiency. The only downside is you can only use uh, Nvidia graphics cards. So if you have a setup which uses a lot of ATI cards, then it's not so good. Now in the meantime, I can show you this. So we've actually tried a few things. So this is actually a power line scenario that we tested. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty light. Let's make it a little bit more clear. Yeah. So as you can see, the, the towers are reconstructed quite well. So you're doing um, any sort of corridor mapping. Uh, I, I maybe haven't gotten the settings 100% um, right, so we just got the unit. I may tweak the settings a little so that we can maybe catch the power lines a little bit better. But for first run, this is just 100, this is about 50 meters above the power line, and we're getting this much uh, clarity already. It's not a 3D uh, mapping, it's just in one single flight. Alright. Zoom in. As well as um, we have a few small data sets. Um, this one is on a river. Uh, it's near our office. So as expected, uh, you're gonna get a lot of holes on water. But it's not too bad. So yeah, uh, I think the data is finished processing. So as you can see, you get the all the images in the part. You get a map basically. So it's not just a LiDAR tool, it's also a photogrammetry tool. Uh, you can do both at once. And let's say if you weren't satisfied with the way the point cloud is colorized, you can then take this map and then just roll it over your point cloud data and recolorize it. Okay, so this is uh, what it looks like when it's completed processing. You can view it in terms of RGB return intensity. So this gives you an idea of how strong the signal was reflected. Right. The most common one is height. So this is what we normally see. And if you want to know more about the quality of your data, let's say how much foliage has penetrated and things like that, you can actually see the more returns. So you can actually see where your points, you know, uh, especially where were your double and triple returns. If you want to figure out why they're shadowing and things like that. Yep. So you can actually configure it here. So you can see the red dots and the green dots. Those are the second and third returns. Now you can also annotate. So what that means is if you click annotation and measurement, you can check where each point was. So if you click here, you get your X, Y, and your elevation. You can measure your distances. So say from here to here. And then you've got a straight line distance of 14.11 meters. This is your area measurement tool and the volume calculation tool. So as you can see, you've got the entire output and this is now in the last file. So let's go back to RGB. Now surprisingly, uh, this was flown at a height of 100 meters. You occasionally can actually get water height. It's a very rare occurrence and I think it only happens in very low flying altitudes. So you see this green strip here? This is actually water surface and this is actually the nadir beam reflected off the surface of the water. Now from here, we can't see actually what the quality of data is like. So we're going to move to another software to check it out. Okay, so um, I'm using Global Mapper to take a look. Um, I like to use it because it's quite simple. So I have three point clouds. One is the L1 point cloud with optimization. One is the L1 point cloud without optimization. One is the P4R point cloud. So I actually use the Phantom 4 RTK to do photogrammetry. And then um, I extracted the point cloud from there. Why? Because it's predictable. So uh, we are very familiar with uh, photogrammetry and we are used to seeing what is the output from photogrammetry. Now, first of all, let's take a simple cross section. Right. Let's take this part. Okay. So you can see, this is the building when, when performed by photogrammetry, right? See the roof is very sharp. 
uh, it has a thickness of about 17 centimeters, 17, 18 centimeters. All right. Now, if we look at the L1 without optimization, now that is a bit larger. Now, this is about 20 centimeters, 22 centimeters, right? And with optimization, yeah, it's back to 17 centimeters. And this is across the same area. So you can see that uh, the optimization tool inside actually works, right? Next, we look at by color. Now let's take these squares. The colorization isn't perfect. If you look at these tiles, let's look at the actual, what it's supposed to look like. They're just actual squares on the ground. But if you look at either one, they're miscolorized. So you don't get that square by square. It's all splattered here and there a little bit. But if you look at the actual uh, ground, it's fine, right? Um, of course, a very good point to test would be a surface like this. Where it's almost flat, right? And you can see the vertical elevation is very little. Now, this was flown at about 100 meters height. It's the same as doing photogrammetry. And you can see the data is quite accurate, uh, especially once you take this and compare so let's put a point just to check the accuracy. Let's put in the edge here. Okay. And yeah, it corresponds with the LiDAR as well. Well, if you really want to project it, let's put it somewhere here. Uh, the distance between the two points would be very small. It's very close. It's a few centimeters apart. So if you're looking in terms of XY accuracy, it's there. It's pretty good. Now, of course, the true measure of uh, the LiDAR's capability is very simple. So what I did was um, I put this data through the software. Uh, I had the noise points removed. Then I did a classification. So I classified ground. So as you can see, these are all ground points. Now, uh, just to make it clearer, we can actually just remove everything except ground. So these are all the ground points. Right? A large percentage of it still remains, which is a good sign, right? And then I actually created the DTM. So as you can see, um, most of the details are still there. You have your actual ground, but uh, not only that, you get the road network that is under the canopy. So it's clear enough that you can see the jogging path that's under the canopy. So if under normal case, all of that will be covered. All of this is covered by trees. So if we just take that away, yep. So you even get the drain at the end of the path. Uh, that one, if you didn't have a tool to extract it, you would barely see it. It's all covered by vegetation. It actually managed to recover that. Uh, there is a river here that is covered by the um, vegetation as well. So as you can see, this is all trees, right? These are all trees. So you can just see underneath the trees, there's actually a drain. Okay. So this is the parking lot with a lot of trees. And we actually managed to uncover the road parking areas underneath it. Same here, underneath the trees here, there's actually a slope, a change in elevation. So it actually managed to dig out the road underneath with the few steps down the gradient. Yeah, so from here, you can actually see that the LiDAR is pretty effective. Um, it gets its job done. So yeah, we'll draw a conclusion in the next video. We'll go over some of its the finer points, uh, cost of ownership and things like that. So thank you very much for listening. This is Chu from Pro Runes, and as always, fly safe.